And now, talking from colleges to the pros, football, and other lesser sports, it's time for Thrasher Sports with Irv Thrasher and Radical Russ. Hey guys, what's going on out there in the world? Irv Thrasher with Radical Russ. Uh-huh. Russ, looking forward to another great night of talking about sports and weed. Yeah, uh, this weekend in college football was uh, plenty of upsets for us to get to, and of course the baseball playoffs are going on. Oh man, right now a big game going on, uh, Game 4 in Los Angeles, and the Dodgers are losing to the St. Louis Cardinals 4-2. Oh. to two. And it looks like there's two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. So time is running out for the Dodgers to win game four. Mm, Big shame there. Also, we've got NFL coverage for you. Uh, Some uh, last-second heroics from Tom Brady to talk about, as well as our scores from our 420 Radio Fantasy Football League, where Herb Crasher's moving on up. Man, I had a big win. Uh, Finally made some moves. I had uh, drafted Nick Foles from uh, Philadelphia in not hopes of it, just thinking that maybe he might Vic might go down, and he was hurt this week. They put him in. I scored some big points, and I also shifted a couple players around because they, they it was time for them to get fired for a week. You know, they weren't putting up, dude. Sometimes you got to put up or shut up. And uh, so, you know, I benched them and uh, finally had a big win. Uh, but as you said, in, in the NFL, huge week. Uh, Tom Brady did electrify as always. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, we've got a little behind-the-scenes talk about uh, the University of Alabama. Herb gave me a great tip on a story out there that we reported in the rant today on the Russ Belville Show. We'll talk a little bit about that and what it's like growing up in Alabama being a hot smoker out there. I know we got some fans out there in the crowd from Alabama. Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, it's just another state in a lot of respects. But, man, they have uh, certain states. I think what's going on, Russ, in my opinion these days is certain states have gotten away with so much. And other states have, have been ha- – had stopped, had put a halt to a lot of this in the past. And uh, now it's time for these states that have gotten away with a lot of this stuff to start – getting called out on it yeah also we want to big uh, send a big shout out to our latest sponsor here at uh, uh herb thrasher flower hour thrasher sports and of course 420 radio uh the cannabis outreach collective uh, you'll be hearing your ad in just a little bit as well but uh great news and man you know spreading the information and, and getting that information out for the people here in oregon yeah great folks uh, they're out of gladstone oregon which is basically portland uh spreading the education helping a lot of uh, patients in the cancer world uh finding doctors uh spreading education and uh kind of helping with medicine so doing good things over there all right we'll take a quick break when we come back from the break we will be talking football both pro and college you're listening to thrasher sports come back cannabis outreach collective is an alternative health and wellness option located in gladstone oregon that serves patients in the portland area and beyond We are a full-service alternative health and wellness collective accommodating patients with natural, organic, holistic, and homeopathic remedies, nutritional guidance, advice, education, and medical cannabis fully in accordance with Oregon OMMP law. You can find out more about Cannabis Outreach Collective on Facebook at COC503 or by emailing CannabisOutreachCollective503 at gmail.com or by telephone at 503-853-1319. Check out our menu on Weed Maps and visit Cannabis Outreach Collective today. Hey, Tokers and Toquettes, Radical Russ here to introduce you to my friend Matt and all the staff at Lush LED Lighting. Growing plants indoors can be a rewarding hobby, but electricity bills can go through the roof. Then you have to cool down all those big hot lights. It can drive a grower insane. With Lush LED Lighting, you can solve many of these issues and double your rewards. If you thought LEDs were... Meet the tech of today. Matt and his scientists have developed the perfect light for flowering plants with far less cost and heat. And the results? Let's just say I appear at a lot of events with the masters of indoor horticulture, and the harvests I saw from Lush LED Lighting were big, tight, sticky, and very effective. Check out LushLEDLighting.com right now and tell them Radical Russ sent you. Double your rewards and lower your expenses with Lush LED Lighting. Welcome back to Thrasher Sports. That's the Lord Weird Slow Fang. Gotta love those guys, man. I mean, come on. They're actually in the studio right now working yeah. on a brand new album. They're signed to Metal Blade Records. So uh, hopefully they'll have something new and we'll get it to you on the Earth Thrasher Flower Hour on Friday nights. All right. So uh, we want to talk a little football because that, of course, is a large reason why we're here. We're big fans of football here at 420 Radio and uh, Thrasher Sports. And uh, I don't know, it depends on what you want to start with. College or Yeah, let's, let's talk about some college, man. All I right. mean, uh, so the, the top 25 polls are out. And, uh, you know, one thing that I've been noticing a little bit is I, I think Oregon is – I wouldn't be surprised here pretty soon if Oregon would, would jump Alabama really? and get that number one. Yeah, because, the, see, the thing is, is uh, Alabama really doesn't play a meaningful game until November 9th, and that's LSU, which is a total class game. I think everyone in the nation knows that that's a class game. 
But Oregon, you know, with uh, beating Washington, you know, who was ranked coming up, and we've mm -hmm. got Stanford. Yeah, they got. That's going to be a huge game. And, and UCLA before and you that. you got UCLA, and so I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I can already see some of the college pundits talking about this, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Oregon jump. But anyways, uh, usual suspects, uh, Clemson and Florida State are up top. So. But UCLA, as you mentioned, that's a team that I've had my eye on for a while. Yeah, raising up all the way to number nine in the AP, <clears throat> number 10 in the USA Today poll. And uh, i got to check and see if uh, Owa Odijazua is still playing for o, uh, for uh, UCLA. He's a uh, that's right. Guy I kind of know. Got I to totally remember that. Oregon. But uh, high school Anthony Johnson's got to be fired up sitting at six and zero Missouri. Yeah, six and zero Missouri and what six and zero Chiefs too. Well, he is. He is. But see, he's leading the SEC East by two games right now. Wow. Florida and Georgia both have two losses, and you got Missouri sitting there at no losses. So a uh, shout out to Anthony Johnson in Missouri, uh, looking really good. Yeah, there was a th this weekend in college football. We had uh, Stanford, of course, losing to Utah. Uh, just a, a few miles away from where Boise State was creaming Utah State. Huge, That's, huge upset. Uh, Stanford. Uh, you know what? I, I really uh, I wouldn't throw too much into that, though, because if you think back the week before, Washington and Stanford had a matchup that was just a total beast of a game. These dudes were throwing punches all the way, and Stanford ended up winning that game, but it took everything out of both of them. And then if you look at this weekend, Washington and Stanford both lose, and it was because that week before they played such a huge game. You can only get up three or four times a year for big games, really. Yeah, yeah, and so they go into Utah, which is not an easy place to play. A little bit of elevation That's when, right. when you get out there. Uh, Washington, of course, lost at home to the Oregon Ducks, and it was uh, it was tied in the first quarter, and then uh, Oregon just puts the... The, the thing is, is like... If you're going to play Oregon, you can't have a turnover. You've got to you've got to match them score yeah, you for score. score. It's yeah. got to be like that uh, the game in the NFL, the Cowboys and the Broncos played the other That's day. Right. It was 51 to 48. You know, you got to you got to play that kind of game. Yeah, it came down to the normal Romo interception there. He's the one that always makes the mistake. Peyton doesn't make the mistake. <laughs> Denver ended up winning that shootout. The Russ is right. You have to score to hang with Oregon because Oregon they're not a team. They're a machine. <laughs> it, it's it's that's the only word you can use for them. I mean, they are a programmed machine, and they're just going to throw it and run it and just score it down your throats every time. Yeah, so you get uh, Stanford. That's the big upset, of course. Uh, Missouri uh, against Georgia, number twenty-five against number seven, uh, beating Georgia at home and soundly, forty-one to twenty-six. Is is it really fair to even call this an upset anymore? Missouri looks bad. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, Missouri is actually turning heads now. Now it's like whoa, because Georgia even. Even with some of the injuries that they've had, they still have a Heisman quarterback right now. Mm -hmm. He's supposedly the best quarterback in the freaking league. And so, you know, they still got players. We're still talking about Georgia. And so, to me, Missouri is looking strong. And really, all they have to do right now is beat either Florida or South Carolina, I think, in these upcoming games. And, dude, they're going to be looking at SEC championship in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, we also had Texas A&M sitting at number nine uh, when they played. And... Uh, Going all the way to the end there with Ole Miss, uh, forty-one to thirty-eight. Yeah, it was a huge game. Uh, but uh, Johnny Manziel uh, took it on halftime. Uh, it was actually close, and then uh, Manziel came out and made Heisman extra plays. I actually went into that game. I went into that morning. I didn't know about the Heisman, and uh, after the Bama game, I thought Mariota from Oregon would get the Heisman. Mm -hmm. And then after the Oregon game, I thought Mariota from Oregon would get the Heisman. And then after the Texas A&M game, changed it. I was going back to Manziel <laughs> because he made some. Outrageous plays, and he is by far the best player in the league. Mariota is part of a machine. Manziel is the best player in the league. Oh, you heard it here first. Uh, Mariota from Oregon, a plug-in cog in the Oregon machine. Well, I don't want to say that. Manziel. I don't want to say that. Right. Well, I, I see what you're saying, and I can see where you can turn that. But it's like, could you take, would you take, if you take Mariota, if you just swapped the two quarterbacks, would Oregon be a better team with Manziel than it is with Mariota? Oh, that's, yeah, okay. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't, don't know how to answer that. Uh, but unfortunately right now, Mariota is in a machine, and Manziel isn't. And so you see more of Manziel's talents. Uh, Manziel has more single perfect plays than Mariota would. So there is okay. the default right there. All right. Well, we had number 10 LSU uh, beat uh, Florida at home. Number 11 UCLA uh, cruised against Cal. And then the next big upset was Texas at home uh, beating Oklahoma, number 12 Oklahoma, by 16 points in the Red River rivalry. Yeah, everyone had Texas counted out, really figured Matt Brown would lose this game and go on and fold. And uh, Texas had another plan, went out, played great football. Actually, the entire game basically came out and punched Oklahoma from the start and led the whole game, ended up having a big win. And now no one knows if Matt Brown's going to leave or not. Number 14, South Carolina beats up on Arkansas 52-7. to Is Arkansas that bad or is South Carolina that good? Oh, man, it's really tough. Uh, we'll find out this week because that is who the number one team in the nation, Alabama Crimson Tide, play is the Arkansas Razorbacks. 
and uh, I'm expecting just another freaking ass whipping pig <laughs> suey. <laughs> you uh, called it uh, last week about Baylor. Watch out for Baylor. They're sitting at five and zero after a thirty five twenty five. I'm telling run. you, that's the best Kansas team State. in Texas. Uh, I think they would beat Texas A and M if they went matchup to matchup. Uh, they're putting up about forty to fifty points a game, and uh, I don't see them losing. Penn State pulls off a thriller at home in overtime over Michigan, number 18, 43 to 40. What a game, man. I mean, these guys punched it out. And uh, as Russ said, in overtime, came down to the kickers, Russ. These freaking kickers, uh, miss. This kicker, miss. <laughs> Do it again. Kicker, miss. This kicker, miss. They had to win it because in the third overtime in college football, in the rules, the kickers aren't allowed to come out anymore. Now you have to run two-point conversions. And so... Uh, who was it again? Uh, Penn State. Uh, Michigan missed their touchdown. They couldn't kick a field goal, so they had to go for it on fourth down. Missed it. Penn State ended up scoring. Wow. Went it by three. And not a single Boise State kicker was involved. That's right. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, number 19, Northwestern, falls at Wisconsin, 35-6. to six. Does this mean uh, Northwestern is overrated? I, you know, I, I, I don't think so. I look at this as they gave it their all against Ohio State. It's the same thing I mentioned with Stanford and Washington. Sometimes these games... You could, in college football, and this is why we talk about sometimes you put an Eastern Tennessee or an Eastern Oregon on your schedule, because these kids, the natural idea, rule of thumb, is you can only get up for four big games a year. And it takes a lot out of a, out of a team. It's, you're not getting paid in college football, all right? Well, unless you, you're going to unless class on Monday morning <laughs> and having to do your freaking homework, man. You know, when you're in the NFL, you're going to a freaking bar after the game or to a strip joint. And you're laying down some G's. And so there's just a whole different attitude. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just uh, made that up. I, I like, like that. that. That's wonderful. <laughs> Texas Tech wins 42-35 over Iowa State. Northern Illinois 27-20 against Akron. And then Virginia Tech holds on 19-9 against Pittsburgh. That's your top 25. Not surprised week. about Akron. Don't be surprised about them. They're actually, Ohio team, a lot of great football teams in Ohio. And their head coach, Terry Bowden. Ah, oh, that's right. Now, looking at the rankings, uh, of course, we're still waiting for the first BCS to come out, but now we've got AP Top 25 and USA Today poll. No differences in the top uh, five, but uh, interesting, in the USA Today poll, Clemson got a first-place vote. Now, they're doing great, man. They're uh, playing great. They've actually had some big wins. They have a Heisman quarterback right now, and so uh, looking big things out of Clemson, actually. We get uh, LSU, Texas A&M, and Louisville in the AP Top 25 for the next three slots. Flip those over. Louisville, Texas A&M, and LSU in USA Today. And then um, UCLA, Miami, and South Carolina. South Carolina, UCLA, and Miami. Uh, so they have the same top 12, but there's a little shake-up once you get below five. Yeah, there is a shake-up in there. One thing I've uh, looking deep down into it, uh, I'm noticing Auburn's creeping up in there now. Yeah, Auburn's Auburn. sitting at five and one. Uh, had, had actually had a couple big wins here lately, and uh, they fired their coach. And they actually going into College Station this weekend to play Johnny Football in Texas A&M. So it'll be a great game to find out actually about Auburn and uh, see what Johnny Manziel can do. Looking at the potential BCS busters, uh, Northern Illinois sitting at number 23 with a 6-0 record, and Fresno State out of the Mountain West is at 17th with a 5-0 record. Uh, they're 19th in the USA Today poll, and Northern Illinois is 23rd in that poll as well. I'm not noticing the blue, blue field in this. Uh, Boise State got three votes in the USA Today poll, so uh, things are not as bad as they have been. Finally right. getting votes again. Here you go. All right, so there's a look at uh, Thrasher Sports on the college level, and uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll hit the pros. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the baseball playoffs that are going on. And uh, when we come back, I've also got a special uh, a special video. Nice. That Looking is, forward to that it. That will rock your socks off. Load those back. bowls, folks. I'm a reefer smoking man. Woodpipe Smoke Shop and Speakeasy is your source for cannabis community gear in southern Wisconsin. Owners Brian and Tammy Wood are located in Kendall, just outside of Madison, and they've got everything for the smoking enthusiast, including a full assortment of pipes, water pipes, hookahs, bubblers, blood hitters, and so much more. They're open noon to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and can help you with your detoxification therapies as well. Call 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com for more information. That's 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com. And as always, Go Pack Go! Welcome back to Thrasher Sports, everybody. It's uh, 18 after the hour. And you know, uh, Earth Thrasher Flower Hour on Friday nights, we do a lot of rock and a little bit of sports. Here on Thrasher Sports, we do a lot of sports and a little bit of rock. That's some Sun Gods in Exile with Smoke and Fire. What can you tell us about them, Irvin? 
They actually broke up uh, oh, no. about a year ago, but within the last month, these guys have gotten back together, and they're still on Small Stone Records, and they are actually fired up, dude. I'm loving the enthusiasm coming out of their Facebook page. So you guys go friend them and uh, check them out. Real uh, southern rock, rock and roll kind of sound. Definitely one of my favorite bands on the Small Stone Records label. All right, before we get back to the sports, I, I promised a surprise for Herb, a video that I wanted to show that was forwarded to me in my Twitter account of an 11-year-old girl at her organ recital. She's at her organ recital. All right, okay. The drum track is tracked. Everything else is this little girl playing organ. Come up with that. <laughs> and at the end of the at the end of the entire video, she stands up. She's wearing an old school Rush T-shirt, and, and you can tell like she's doing some some organ recital, some staid, laid back, you know, kind of uh, well not laid back, uptight parents kind of thing. Because at the end of it, like she's like da 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 da, you know, the end of the yeah, song, yeah, and yeah. there's like <laughs> I don't even know how to act. <laughs> like, what the hell was that? <laughs> oh, she's such a sweetie, but I don't know about the song. Yeah, she takes a big bow and walks on. That's great. So I, I just had to share uh, that. Shout out that to was... that girl, man. That's big time stuff. Uh, <laughs> update awesome. on the baseball game right now. Dodgers are still down 4-2, to two, bottom of the ninth inning with no outs. And uh, this is it. So Andre Ethier is up to bat, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So let's get into some uh, NFL here on Thrasher Sports. We've been... Uh, uh, Taking a look at the games from last weekend, and I got to tell you that uh, game in uh, uh, the Patriots game, Saints Patriots game, what an ending to that one! Man, it was amazing because you know it was like they threw that uh, Brady threw an interception like in two in, minutes ago, yeah, or yeah, and you thought it was over at that point, and but you should know because if Tom Brady's going to get the ball back, you just you just got to know, and then he took it down, and and he was so genius with the way he had ball management and time management and when he got it down to like what was it the 14 15 yeah. yard line yeah you know and that's to one go. play to him that's to him that's nothing and then he threw it to some back of the corner who no one's expecting and amazing stuff yeah and um another on the other side of from bad to worse uh the giants fall to zero and six I don't from even know what to say about that team, man. Uh, I mean, I, I'm loving it from a Schadenfreude's point of view because of the Giants knocking the Packers out of the playoffs the last two times they've met. But, wow, 0-6. I mean, what can you say? I mean, Tom Coughlin, he's got to be just freaking out. I mean, you know, it's like the New York Giants. They're just not used to this. And then you got Eli Manning over there who he's actually always probably used to winning also. And so uh, Chicago Bears uh, actually hurt Green Bay Packers by winning that game. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's like the Giants. I don't, I don't see them uh, coming out. I thought they would, they would turn it around, but I don't see it anymore. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad for the G-men. Uh, the Packers win their game against the Ravens, 19 to 17. But they lose, uh, they lose a couple of big receivers and defensive player. Uh, they've been going out on the waiver wires trying to pick some uh, practice squad players up for backup in the wide receiver core. So we'll see how that turns out. Was a silver lining to the Packers, though, is you guys have rushed for over 100 yards last three out of four games. And, and 99 Eddie, in the other game. And Eddie Lacy is a big part of that. And let me tell you something, he is going to get better. He's just warming up. He's just like, he doesn't even know how to act right now. Yeah. Once he figures out how to act, I mean, you guys are going to look into adding many yards to that. I certainly hope so. There's a couple of plays there where uh, he made some players whiff. It was very nice to watch. There are some other great games, uh, you know, or, or, or terrible games, depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, the Texans. Matt Schaub goes out after setting the NFL record of four pick sixes, four games with a pick six in a row, and his replacement comes in and throws a pick six. Man, Texas, <laughs> if you talk about one problem, they've got two problems. I mean, it's just bad in Texas. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, they just have to fight it out. I would actually put Schaub back in and, and tell him that, dude, this is your year. I don't care what they're saying on ESPN. This is your year. You can either save your job now with the rest of these games and get out there and get it out of your head. Or tell me now, and I will get somebody else in. But I, I would put Shaw back in. He's not a bad. You know, we've seen it many times, Russ. The, the professional leagues are brutal in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, man, and there's slumps. It's not just baseball. Players have slumps. 
And I've seen players go down, and I've seen players come up. So hold your head up, bro. There you go. All right, and uh, another game, you know, talking about the other teams that are still on the schneid, uh, the Buccaneers lost at home, 0-5 now. The Eagles with uh, Nick Foles come in. Threw what? Two, three touchdowns? He did Four? throw two, three touchdowns. He threw two touchdowns, and he rushed for that a touchdown. It. And so it was real huge. Uh, yeah, the Eagles, uh, big win for them. I don't know what that means for Vic. I don't know if he'll be back this week or if he's still hurt. I definitely have to figure out from a fantasy uh, point of view. But, man, I, I think the Chiefs have to be mentioned here, sitting mm -hmm. at 6-0, and mm -hmm. uh, beating a r division rival in the Oakland Raiders. But just a, no one ever expected 6-0. Uh, and 0. What were they, two, they had two wins last year, wasn't it? Two wins two last year. But it's amazing. They, they're one of those teams where they were in every game. Yeah. You know, even if they had only two wins, they were in every game, and you just knew. And then once they got Andy Reid, who is a veteran coach, doesn't have any rings, but he has been to a Super Bowl before. That's right. And uh, Chiefs go up to 6-0, tied at the top of the ranks in their division and their conference with the Denver Broncos at 6-0, who were held to a low of 35 points by the 0-6 Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville's going to win. They're going to beat somebody. Uh, it's a matter of time. But they do suck. Goodness <laughs> they do suck. suck. There is a suckage going right, on. Suck. Now, uh, interesting on Sunday night, the uh, team from Washington played the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys ended up winning 31-16. to But it was notable for, at halftime, Bob Costas on the national TV delving into the whole team name mascot controversy over the Washington Redskins. Well, I think it's a uh, – I haven't even heard about the game. All I've heard about yeah. is that, basically. And for the people who are for this name change, it was a huge win, uh, that game, because – Still, to this day, that's all it's talked about. Even Dave Brocky, who's lead singer of Guar, is very outspoken, huge Washington Redskins fan, who has been guest on the Dan Patrick Show and ESPN, so he knows what he's talking about in sports. But he has uh, come out also and had this huge uh, publication about changing the name. So everyone is kind of coming out these days about it. Yeah, and uh, you know, I had mentioned, I think on a previous show, how uh, if there was a compromise to be made, I think keeping the logo and the colors, but changing the name to the Washington Americans, Boy, you got a Native American. I still right like that helmet, idea, you know? but I haven't heard heard it out there in, in the you know in the yeah. Twitter world, and so I don't I don't know, man. But I love that idea. I wish somebody would come up with it who has some meaning. There was uh, there was an article, a couple articles out uh, that uh, one that I read that was ranking how offensive each particular uh, team name was out there, and uh, they actually had the Cleveland Indians as the worst. Uh, oh, we have a final. Yeah, it was final. So the St. Louis Cardinals win Game Four. Of the freaking remote playoffs. Yeah. Gosh dang it. And so they're up three games to one, and uh, they beat them four to two. So shout out to all you St. Louis Cardinal fans. Really looking good for you. And uh, today, Boston beat Detroit in game three. So Boston is actually up uh, two games to one in that American League series. So looking good. Baseball coming down. All right. So uh, there you go. And on the, uh, on the uh, controversy there with the uh, Washington team, it's uh, – uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people feel a lot of ways on this, but I don't think the issue is going away. It's something that you know college sports addressed. The NCAA actually made it so no team I can't remember what year they did this, but no team with a Native American mascot could participate in its playoffs. They, they said, "Oh, you can keep your name if you want. You ain't playing in our playoffs." Right. And you know maybe it's time for the NFL to do this if the if Dan Snyder, who the owner of the Redskins, seems he's not going to. Well, Snyder's proven he's yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. He so, is not going to do it. They are going to have to force him to do it, or it's just the way it is. I think, I'm starting to think he actually likes it. Yeah. To, to him, this is his team in the news. Yeah. And you know, one thing it's doing this year is it's masking the awful, sucky play that the Washington Redskins are actually putting up this year. There if you, you look at uh, RG3, he's one of the worst quarterbacks in the league this year. And uh, we're not hearing anything about it because of this name change thing is so popular. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break here again. And when we come back, we'll update you on the 420 Football League. So stick around. You're listening to Thrasher Sports. I'm a reefer smoking man. Woodpipe Smoke Shop and Speakeasy is your source for cannabis community gear in southern Wisconsin. Owners Brian and Tammy Wood are located in Kendall, just outside of Madison, and they've got everything for the smoking enthusiast, including a full assortment of pipes, water pipes, hookahs, bubblers, one hitters, and so much more. They're open noon to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and can help you with your detoxification therapies as well. Call 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com for more information. That's 608 608- 4667473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com. And as always, go pack go.
back with Crasher Sports. Scorpion Child right there, I hear. That's right. Right on those guys on the group last records. Uh, Britain, Texas. There you go. Texas band. Doing oh. really good things these days. Scorpion Child. Cut like that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, Scorpion Child. Russ, I was looking at this uh, before we get to uh, the fantasy football. I was looking at the NFL schedule real quick. I was looking at the Monday night game, and can you imagine? Ah. We're talking about a one in four or one in five Minnesota Vikings against the zero in six New York Giants. Yeah, I'm sure ESPN is thrilled to have drawn that one. Boy, did they freaking <laughs> plan that one real well, didn't they? Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> I guess I have to root for the Giants to win so the Vikings lose. But really, I don't care. You really don't. I mean, you don't have to worry about the Vikings. They're Packers got. Packers have Cleveland. Cleveland's oh, see, at Green Bay. Cleveland's gonna give us a game. I like Cleveland. I yeah. like what Cleveland's doing, actually. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cleveland and Cincinnati fight it out to win that division. Because Pittsburgh and Baltimore really have shown me nothing this year. Yeah, uh, Baltimore's really fallen off. Of course, they lost a lot of starters. Well, Pittsburgh, too, they don't have anyone. Yeah. They got Ben, and that's about it. Yeah, and uh, not seen much from them. So, yeah, you, you've got a point there as far as that goes. So, big-time stuff. Uh, you got New England at the Jets. Jets had that big Monday night win, and then they just tanked last weekend. Yeah. And so New England coming off that big win that Russ and I just talked about. So look forward to that. Let's see what's up. Actually, you know what's a pretty good game, and you know what to think about it? Cincinnati versus Detroit. Detroit's sitting at four and two, uh, and tied Cincinnati with the is too. And uh, you know, I got to I got to cheer for Cincinnati in that one to help the Packers out. That's actually a big uh, big game right there. The winner of that game uh, is going to be uh, looking good for uh, playoffs. So, anyways, there's a few games uh, that's looking kind of good. The rest of the schedule, not so much. Uh, nothing really to speak about. Dallas, Philadelphia, maybe. Uh, Romo coming off a of, you know huge and, loss. And Nick Foles. Nick Foles. Uh, I, I'm not sure though. I haven't heard if Vic, you know, because I I can't imagine. But maybe you can. Uh, but I can't imagine taking Vic's job from him now because he got hurt. So I'm, I'm expecting if Vic is back, he's going to be back. All right. Winding things up here with our 420 Radio Fantasy Football League. And uh, updating our standings, we have only one undefeated team remaining, the Purple Kush Punishers, sitting at 6-0, and oh, and a whole bunch of teams behind them fighting out at, are you ready, 4-2-0. and oh. Wow. Wow. A bunch of 420 teams here in Week, week 6. Uh, Purple one, Kush, two, looking good. Four, Shout out to you. Seven of them, including the Iowa Brick Ballers with uh, our own Lively Libra, and the Rip City Tumors with... Uh, uh, Brian the Red and Indica Ninjas, that's uh, Anthony Johnson's team, all sitting at 4 and 2. We've got uh, Emerald Tide has risen in the rankings, two spots to number 16, tied with Roller J at 2 and 4. And uh, the Pigskin Potheads tied for the worst record in the league, 1 and 5, with Wiley Cooper's Clux Clan and the Bull Raiders. Well, I think everyone's still in it for playoffs. I don't know about when getting first place, but to make the playoffs, I think everyone's kind of still in it. Looked like it had a good game for Emerald Tide, beating Bull Raiders 167 to 131. Nick Foles gave you. 57 points at quarterback with uh, LaFell, the wide receiver from uh, Carolina, giving you another 22. He 33 did. points off your Rams defense. I uh, know. They were getting some uh, interceptions. And uh, who were they playing again, does it say? It was Houston. That's right. So it was Schaub, you know. And uh -huh. it was that that guy you talked pick about. Six, they got that pick six. But, you know, the guy I was playing, uh, what was his name? Uh, Bull Raiders. Did. Yeah. He had a running – he had some major points on the bench. Yeah. He, he had a running back and a wide receiver that both had bye weeks. So he got zero points you out you got to change those players out, folks. Uh, the them computer's up. not going to change them for you. You've got to change them. That's right. And uh, I uh, – with Pixie and Potheads, lost a game. Not a bad performance, 101 to 127. Uh, but uh, tight end Fred Davis for the uh, Washington team got zero points. And uh, my uh, – Joseph, my defensive back, got zero points. So I had two players with zero, another player with .27 Aqib Talib against Cam Newton, who ended up putting up 56 points at quarterback spot. Brandon Whedon did okay for me, 44 yeah, points. Yeah, Whedon did great. He had a great game. We mentioned Cleveland's doing real good. And Marshawn Lynch at running back gave me 31 points, but uh, unfortunately left Brandon Tate on the bench with 10 points. I left Vontae's Perfect on the bench with 11 points. And now I've got a few players that are off suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, LaVon Brazil is now available. Uh, Blackman, the wide receiver from Jacksonville. Oh, you got to get him in. i got to get him in. He had 33 points. Yeah, you got to get him in. Ja He's one of the few players Jacksonville's got. Yeah, the only player. <laughs> So that's the standings in our Fantasy Football League. And uh, let's see, our lowest performing player, uh, our team was the Patriots, followed by Little Lebowski Urban Achievers and Kansas City Chief and all with below 100 points this week. All right, so uh, looking forward. To, uh, I'm hopefully going to have a two-game win streak. I haven't really looked at the matchups yet, but looking forward to see what this week has in store. All right. There you have it. That's uh, what we got for Crash Sports this week. We're here every Tuesday night for, oh, you know, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. We'll see what what turns up. We also uh, want to thank you all for tuning in and enjoying the music. Appreciate you guys supporting us. Keep them loaded, guys. Check us out Friday night, Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. We'll be back. 420radio.org.